In this week's episode, we're going to talk about the 4% rule. Does it still work in 2021? Let's find out. Hey there, this is Patrick King with Prana Wealth. On this channel, we help you build your wealth faster so that you can make work optional sooner. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. And don't forget to sign up for our email newsletter at pranawealth.com newsletter. When it comes to retirement planning, the 4% rule has grown into a wildly popular rule of thumb to determine how much retirees can withdraw from their portfolios each year without running out of money. But does the 4% rule still work in 2021? Let's talk about three shortcomings of the 4% rule and how it can still be applied to your retirement planning. The 4% rule is all about safe withdrawal rates. It arose from William Benjen's 1994 study on the maximum safe withdrawal rates for retiree portfolios. This research was followed up on in 1998 by a group from Trinity University, resulting in the now famous Trinity study. While groundbreaking at the time, the initial scope of these analyses was relatively simple. Some of the underlying assumptions included a retirement period of 30 years, a portfolio of 50% diversified stocks and 50% long-term corporate bonds, and asset class returns and inflation assumptions that would match historical averages. What Benjamin found was 95% of the time, a 4% withdrawal rate would not deplete an investor's portfolio over a 30-year retirement. Of course, this starts to sound a lot like the scene from Anchorman. They've done studies, you know, 60% of the time, it works every time. It doesn't imbue you with confidence, right? Noting the potential volatility of long-term corporate bonds, Benjamin reran the study using intermediate-term treasury bonds instead. With this change, he discovered a 100% success rate for the 4% rule. Over the years, these studies have been picked apart, modified, and recreated with more nuance. Notably, Wade Fow updated the original Trinity study in 2015, painting a more sobering picture around the probabilities of using a 4% withdrawal rate over 30 years. With this background, let's now examine three shortcomings of the 4% rule. Shortcoming number one would be interest rates. The first potential shortcoming of the 4% rule is the use of historical data for bond returns. Interest rates have been steadily declining since 1980. That's a 40-year bull run for bonds. As a reminder, when interest rates decrease, bond values increase. Unfortunately, there isn't much room left for interest rates to decline. As of the creation of this video, the current 10-year Treasury yield sits at 1.37%. It's hard to imagine a scenario where bond returns going forward are higher than what we've seen over the last four decades simply due to the mechanics of interest rates. This would negatively impact the calculations behind the 4% rule. Shortcoming number two would be inflation. In 2021, inflation has become a hot topic within the financial media. Indeed, we've all experienced higher prices lately in housing, cars, fuel, and at the grocery store. I'm a little upset that my local brunch spot has stopped offering their crab cake benedict because of pricing issues. Where this could potentially compromise the 4% rule lies in the inflation assumptions. The original studies behind the 4% rule did include inflation in their calculations. They assumed that after the first year, the withdrawals would increase annually according to the Consumer Price Index, or CPI. The potential dangers here are twofold. First, the inflation that retirees experience from this point forward could be higher than historical trends. The second danger related to inflation is the CPI number itself. Over the years, CPI calculations have been continually modified so much that some argue they no longer reflect actual inflation felt by U.S. consumers. So does the 4% rule still work if the inflation assumptions are significantly higher? If it were my retirement, I would certainly want a more in-depth analysis. Shortcoming number three would be historical returns. 
Finally, the use of historical stock market returns in the research behind the 4% rule calculations could potentially impact its use in the real world. Given current market valuations, there is a non-zero probability that we see lower than historical return numbers over the next 5 to 10 years. Again, any negative trend in the assumptions behind the 4% rule could call into question whether it works as an actual retirement withdrawal strategy. Let's not forget that the sequence of investor returns in retirement matters. Two retirees may have identical average returns over 30 years, but the one with lower initial returns will need to reduce their withdrawal rates in order to make up for a slow start. So does the 4% rule still work in 2021? Just like any math equation or computer program, garbage in, garbage out applies the 4% rule. Understanding all of the assumptions behind the original studies is important when applying them to a real retirement scenario. This is where hiring a fee-only financial advisor can be helpful. That being said, we shouldn't ignore the 4% rule either. It's still a useful tool in our toolkit and is a great first step in the retirement planning process. It's a perfect back-of-the-envelope method to give us a reality check during the years preceding retirement. If you'd like help in developing a retirement withdrawal strategy that goes beyond the simple 4% rule, then visit us at pranawealth.com to see if we're a good fit. We do still have the capacity to take on new clients. As a fee-only financial advisor in Atlanta, we can and do work virtually with clients all across the U.S., and we're here ready to help you when you're ready. Hey, if you found this video helpful, please help me grow my channel by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to sign up for our email newsletter at pranawealth.com newsletter. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.